next video we should finally have these custom water tanks and we're gonna be insulating and mounting them. Maybe when I organize this video, I'll put it into two sections of like pre-devastation and post-devastation. That sounds pretty that sophisticated. Was, well, I guess it's not really working very hard. No, it just, it just, uh, that was the other side. Oh. So guys, this works as a polarity. You go positive on positive, negative on negative, it goes up. And when you switch them, it goes down. Mm -hmm. And when it reaches a certain point, it has a switch built in. So it, it hits the physical switch and it stops. And then changes and goes back with the button. That sounds pretty killer. That's so much better that's, than the ones we had. That's much quieter. Wow, that's really That's a quiet. nice sound. You don't think it has anything to do with the fact that it's not pushing anything up? Of, of course, it will be uh, under load acting differently. Yeah. But this is pretty pretty good. Pretty quiet for, yeah. <laughs> for the neutral this state. One, this one has 3000 Nm push and I think 2.5 uh, pull. And now in this stage it should be supporting those solars too because it will be angled and solars will be like this. These have been consuming my life like crazy. This is not even finished solution, but this is what I've been working on. A simple principle as lifting the solars up. So let's begin with why would you be even want to be lifting solars up? When you have a summertime and you have a really steep angle, sun shining on your solars in a case of my one kilowatt you would be getting maybe 150 200 watts if the sun shoots at the solars straight down you're getting your hypothetical one kilowatt so this is why you want to be tilting your solar to change the angle so you can improve the angle between the sun and the panel itself in the summer times the curve of your power goes slowly up early hours in the morning and as the sun is higher on the sky it slowly increases the power from solars you're getting and when you're in around the midday you have the desirable one kilowatt so throughout the day the curve goes roughly like this so let's say first three four hours of the day is really weak and the last three to four hours are really weak when you are able to change the angle so then the curve first hour goes straight up, stays up, and one hour before the sunset goes down. So this difference, tiltable or non-tiltable solars, that can make a couple kilowatt hours difference what I can harvest from the sun. But now let's take a look how complicated this bloody thing is. What I'm aiming for is the lightweight structure. I'm trying to make it as light as possible because every kilo is precious, and on the other side, I want it to be safe and I want it to work. So I don't want to be risking moments like when the wind blows, I would be scared that it rips something off. 
If the wind blows, it needs to stay. Then I'm looking at the locking mechanism when it's tilted down so it doesn't rattle when driving, so it doesn't move, so it's a nice and solid. And all of this, I'm trying to use as minimum as possible of the material. So you are probably familiar with the roof layout. We already have these cutouts of windows. Between these, here's where the vent is supposed to be. And here's the triple glazed window we already have on the roof. I decided to make this one bean along the, along the entire length of the roof to support those solars. And I'm purposely ending it here, not all the way at the end of the solar length, because I would be creating more lever on those actuators. And in a really low position where it's folded down, that would be difficult to overcome this heavy lever. I would like to show you how this actuator works. It's a really simple principle where here I have AC to DC converter. It gives me 12 volts and it is as simple as taking the positive and positive, negative or negative and connecting. As it has juice, it goes one way. And then when you reverse polarity, that means positive or negative and negative on positive, it goes the other way. And then in between you can just wire one of the switches uh, that, uh, that do reversing polarity. So it can be this one goes up or goes down and stops in its limit. Or you use one of these that as long as you hold it goes up and as long as you hold it goes down. This is a really simple principle that you bring 12 volts, you have one output and another output. Oof, Vladdy went for a walk to kind of wrap his head around what just happened. But we are back from intending to pick up our water tanks and we did not anticipate them to be done so poorly. So there's kind of this order that you need to do a van build in, especially when you're in like the technical phase. And for us, because we have an external tank, we can't approach flooring or wiring or insulation or anything until those tanks are mounted and we can start drilling into the floor. First would be our water tanks from below. And the reason that those are first is because for the plumbing, we'll need to drill holes in these floors. So we don't wanna start drilling until we know the status of our tank. So the floor is paused. Lottie specifically put so much time and effort into this tank, was so communicative with the guy to make them. And they were, awful <laughs> it's so bad and we lost a lot of time on them like we're not taking them uh there's obviously some loss there not only for time but for money i mean they weren't even like the size that we ordered you know we intended to have 160 liters of water and with all of the compromises that he chose to make without including us it was like a loss of over 20 liters <laughs> we have three options really where we take these, which is not a real option. The second would be for us to go through this entire process again and order new tanks from a new person and hope that they're done right, but that will take months. Like this has already taken months and that would delay our next phase of the van. And the third option, which is looking like what's gonna happen is for Lottie to make them himself. With zero experience. Oh, <laughs> I know he would want to. It's not that he wouldn't want to. It's that we have to go through the research of finding a plastic welder. It's that we need to research the materials more. With his talent and his love for learning and his experience level, it's totally possible. It's just hard to get excited for because we, we are still kind of mourning <laughs> the fact that these tanks were such like an epic fail. The only other thing left to do is to try to chip away progress at that solar lift because Lottie's engineering that from scratch. So that's the only thing that's not depending on the water tank process. I have no idea how, how, how. Just lift, lift. I just need to lift up.
So if this completely changes these two axles, not pushing up, but actually playing with this, not as a static hinge, but actually as a rail, then if we can be lifting like this, that opens up the whole world of options. This is still going to take me a few weeks, so um, it's, it needs some time and prototyping. But next video, we have something cool and unique we think you might like. Got some really cool questions of people asking like, why do you have a camera down where you want to do your automatic gray release? Are you worried that Millie will step on it? Not worried about Millie stepping on it, but if you've ever stayed in a camper van, you know that trying to find the perfect way to release your gray water looks a lot like this. Forward, no, 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 back, back, good, good. Yeah, good running, running. Yeah, running, it's still running. Wow, that was a lot of water. Still running, running, still running, keep it open. Okay, now it's slow, but it's still running. For all those who were concerned about our le electronics being baked in the sun, and even for those who had the awesome idea of having that um, new platform have some wireless charging, the truth that we didn't really convey in that video was that that spot is not for our phones. We'll be putting keys up there. If we're swiveled around and staying in these seats, we'll be able to like turn and put our coffee on there every now and then. It's just a nice platform to be able to utilize the dashboard. But our phones, we want to have a completely different system for. We're really eyeing those new Peak Design mobile mounts. That's what we want to be using on our e-bikes. It's what we want to be using all over the van and each of those mounts includes a self charger so we want to make sure that we can just blip, 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 our phones all over the van kind of like last time and how we utilize those magnets another awesome question that was in the comments how on earth do we plan on covering those panorama windows are there going to be some sort of magnetic curtains well of course lottie thought of a very cool idea for these instead built under and like built into the ceiling there will be a layer of curtains so that they will be on runners and be able to slide over and cover no hassle no storage issues and very like quick to use quick to cover so in the morning if i'm lying down right above that gorgeous roof window we can just whoop and close it but the real comment the comment that comes in every video, the comment I know you're all thinking non-stop when you're sitting and watching these build videos. How's Millie? Lottie's family all lives together. His brother lives next door to his parents with his wife and son. So our nephew sees his grandparents every day. This little playhouse was built by Lottie's dad as a birthday gift to our nephew, Sebastian, and was made at the workshop. The whole family is made up of builders and tradies. Both homes were built by the family themselves. Lottie made the furniture in both houses, his dad built both structures, and his brother did all the tile work in both homes. So basically, Millie gets double the yard. Jesus. Oh. Hey, stop it. Hey. <laughs> that is the definition of a curious cool. So this is one of Millie's spots, and the reason why you see is because there's this perfect little angle for her to rest herself on. <laughs> yep. Okay, okay, we'll let you rest. These seem to be pretty good. First testing, water sits on the top, mm -hmm. in the corners down here, and we actually had a leak the first day we brought it here when a layer of snow 
dropped on the top <laughs> and then I came in the morning and I see a little paddle and I'm like, no, no, <laughs> this is the windows because these are screwed to the car. So I expect that these will be the least potential to have a problem with. And in the morning when I saw that, no, <laughs> took a letter, took a look and I ended up just forgetting screwing one of the screws through the hole. So there was a seriously <laughs> hole <laughs> where I forgot to screw it in. So just a blob over the top and now it seems to be perfect. No leaks. We'll see how this performs long term. I'm curious, but I'm a believer in a developing. I bet we would sort out a better solution if this doesn't work out. The van isn't the only build happening at the workshop. Between our van build projects, there are also e-bike builds happening for our small business. Right now I'm filming Lottie doing work on the Winder bike for one of our video guides. These e-bikes are sleek, silent, fast, free to use, and easy to maintain. E-bike 4.2, for example, can go 60 miles per hour, fully charges in 90 minutes, and has a range of 50 miles. That means you can ride 50 miles before needing to charge, and we're lucky to live in a time where electricity is easy to come by. Riding through places like Cappadocia is indescribable, but the daily practical uses of an e-bike are just as awesome. If you can build a camper van, you can build an e-bike. And because of our parts list and video guide, you can build it in your garage with very basic tools for only the price of parts. This is a DIY dream, and neither of us can imagine van life without them. Head over to our website, mysuperebike.com, to learn more about how to build one yourself. We have loads of videos on the channel if you have any questions about user experience or you wish to see testing videos. The playlist is called DIY e-bikes, and we made sure that those videos have good music too. The green screen posted. Exposition from now on, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah. Local stuff coming. <laughs>